Hi everyone, my name is Sonia Lara. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, but I currently reside in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I am the artist in residence for the month of May in Shenandoah National Park. So the work that I've been working on here at Shenandoah has been a lot of poetry, specifically poetry that mixes the different sounds of nature with some of my experiences of love, um, friendship. I really like focusing on the lyric in my work. Um, there's a lot of attention to sound and musicality. And so I've been taking a lot of time hiking and listening to different bird songs or the gravel crunch beneath my hiking boots, um, even the way that the deer will move in and out of the bushes. I've been trying to interlace some of those sounds with um, the feelings and sentiments that are in my work. When I'm starting to write a piece, I will often go somewhere where I feel like I won't be seen or bothered. Um, and that's just because <laughs> when I'm writing, like I will often move around a lot um, or make like weird facial expressions. Or if I like want to write about the way that like a hand moves, I'll like sit and like watch my hands and like move my hands a lot. And, and that might look really weird to other people. <laughs> so I like go into places where I feel hidden. Um, and so here at Shenandoah, I found actually this like little nook um, by a waterfall by Dark Hollow Falls. And what I do is I'll bring a piece to read. So that could be like a poetry book or a literary magazine that I really enjoy reading. And I'll often read for like 30 minutes to an hour. And I know when it's time to stop reading when a line from someone else's poem will kind of stick with me. And as I continue trying to read other pieces, I'll find that that one line just kind of keeps sticking out to me and I can't get past it. And so that's an indicator to me that there's something in that line, either the way that it's been written or the subject matter that it's talking about that makes me want to write something similar or have the same sentiment or feeling. So what I do is I'll put that to the side and then I'll pick up my laptop I wish I was a writer that wrote freehand on pieces of paper. It would also make it way easier when like hiking out here because um, I've had to bring my laptop with me. But I find that I can type way faster than I can write. Um, and so what I do is I'll open my laptop, open it to a new Microsoft Doc page or Google uh, Doc page, and I'll start writing for 10 minutes straight. And my rule is that my hands can't leave the keyboard and they can't stop moving for 10 minutes. And I'll do that again and again until I feel like I have a really solid draft of what I wanna write about. And then after I have that solid draft, I kind of go back into it and figure out like the nuance of the piece. What is it trying to express? What's the story I'm trying to tell? And how can I make it sound really beautiful? Because I think that lyric poetry is really beautiful um, and I want to interweave that musicality um, into the piece. I think a lot inspires me. I think about nature a lot and so that's been really helpful being here at Shenandoah National Park um, but also other artists work whether that's writing or painting or drawings, um, interviews. I think um, the news, I read the news every day, and conversations with friends and families too. Um, I try to journal almost every day, um, and I find that that time dedicated to reflection also really helps me with my writing process and kind of shows me what I want to be focusing on in my writing. I think I've been the most influenced by two things here at Shenandoah. Well, actually three, <laughs> that's a lie, three. One bird song. Even though I don't know any of the birds, um, I keep like recording their songs as I'm walking around. Um, and then I can do that research later, right? And figure out what those birds look like. But I kind of like the mysteriousness of it um, and just kind of being able to fill in the gaps myself and, and not knowing. Um, I think that sometimes not knowing can be a really beautiful thing too, um, and just listening to what they have to say. Um, and then I've also been really drawn to the waterfalls and the way that they sound, um, as opposed to like the river and how that sounds, um, and just like the sheer beauty of the waterfalls. And then I've been really intrigued about the deer here because you can tell that they are like national park deer because they have no fear. <laughs> They're just like always in the road and look at you and they'll be like, what are you gonna do? You have to stop for us. I've been really entranced with this like bravery and courage that the deer have. 
and like the sense of peace that they have. Because um, I think a lot of times when we think about deer specifically, like I've written about them before, there's always this nuance of like the fear and like them bolting in front of cars and running. But here there's like a total juxtaposition to that. Um, there's like a lot of sense of like serene and calm. And so that's been something I've been really fascinated about here. I think that this uninterrupted time at Shenandoah has reminded me of the power of reflection um, and sitting in silences. In my day-to-day -day life, I think about how often I fill my space with sound. So if I go for a walk, I put my headphones in. If I'm going for a run, I'm listening to music. If I'm doing chores around my apartment, I'm listening to a podcast or music. If I'm driving, I'm listening to the radio. Even if I go like grocery shopping, the speakers are playing songs. And so I'm just constantly like overwhelmed with sound that's meant to distract me. Um, and sometimes it's educational, right? Through like the podcast that I'm listening to, but I'm just constantly being overwhelmed with other people's thoughts or other people's um, like artwork through songs. And I'm not really allowing myself to sit in silences. And so while I've been hiking here, that's been one of the biggest takeaways, I think, is sitting in those silences. I've gone for a lot of really long hikes here, some of which have been five or six hours. And I think those are some of the longest stretches that I've just sat with myself and allowed the thoughts to come up as they do organically. And it's been interesting to see what's come up. There's a lot that I haven't thought about in years. There's a lot I thought I've forgotten about. Um, and some of it was hard to sit with. It's not always like these like beautiful, magical moments, but I think that I've learned that there's a lot of strength and vulnerability in allowing those to kind of come up and surface and taking the time to write them down and kind of sitting in that uneasiness sometimes because I think that's what pushes me as an artist and showcases like you're not fully over this experience, like you need to write about it um, or you haven't fully processed this because it's so easy in your day to day life to kind of keep pushing that off um, and not allow myself to um, process some of the things that I probably should be. And so Shenandoah and this three week residency has pushed me to um, take more time for myself. And I think that when I leave here, that's something that I'm going to try to incorporate more in my day to day life as well. I think the biggest thing that I want to communicate through my artwork is the power of vulnerability and honesty. In my day-to-day -day life, I'm not really good about talking about my feelings. We have so many responsibilities and jobs and tasks and these like really long to-do lists that um, being vulnerable and open isn't always, it doesn't always seem possible to do. Um, and so I think that's like the biggest thing that I want people to take away from my work is to get this little piece of me that they might not be able to always, um, and to get to know me a little bit, or to see themselves in the pieces that I'm writing about. I try to really write a lot about like the human condition, and so I hope that there's a form of connection when readers uh, read my work. Um, and if it's none of the above, then I hope that they're able to see some of the beauty that I write about, because I really try to incorporate that in my work. Um, and I think that finding those little pockets of beauty in life can be really rewarding. And finally, I would like to thank the Shenandoah National Park Trust for this opportunity to come out here and stay at this residence for three weeks. Um, this support has changed my life and given my artwork all of the time and dedication um, that I think it needs and deserves. And I'm so thankful for everyone's support. So thank you.